So this is uh, my new friend meeting some uh, very limited quality of people here on social media. This dude was so uh, beautiful by communicating with me back and forth on Instagram. I'm very green to social media and he was just so full of energy, wishing me good vibes. And I'm so blessed now to meet him physically. And what's even crazier, he's right in my backyard in Miami and I was just yeah. asking him how he got into this whole social media stuff. So it's like a perfect time. Mm -hmm. so, so tell me the, uh, the, the skinny. So, all right, so just break it down. <laughs> so it, it, I was in a group called Pretty Ricky. Well, I'm actually still in a group Pretty Ricky. We actually go on tour in the end of next month on the 28th called a Millennial Tour. The first, last year we did Millennial Tour for the first time, 2019. We was the second highest grossing tour of the year. Wow. And this year we're doing it again. It's going to take over the world again. And, uh, but yeah, just a quick wow. backstory. Um, me and my brothers got in a group called Pretty Ricky. We, they decided to create the group. And my father was basically telling me, like, listen, you know, you was all, I was always in dance groups. And he was like, yo, Speck, get on stage with your brothers. So I was like, all right, well, whatever. You know, I was up there dancing around, what the hell I was doing. And <laughs> one day, the guy named Jim Johnson, he was like, our producer, he was like, give Speck a verse on a song. I was like, all right, cool. Went in there and did my little verse, wrapped my little bars. That was the call lines. And I was just like, all right, cool. I performed and all the girls went crazy. They was like, all right, we put Speck on all the songs. So I was like, all right, cool. So at that point, I started becoming like one of the most popular uh, guys in the group and like pretty much the face of the group. And just honestly, just kept, kept it going, kept it going. And we had a record called Grind On Me that was getting played on Power 96. And when it was getting played on Power 96, they played it one time a day, every night. They played it one time, one time, one time. And they started blowing up the radio stations like, I want to hear that song. And then they wouldn't Calling play DJ it. Laz. They wouldn't play it because they kept playing it one time. So they kept requesting, like, play this song more. And we came the number one requested record in the history of the radio station, wow, Power wow. 96 in Miami. And then pretty much January came, Atlanta Record CEO, Craig Kalman, came and was like, yo, who's the best talent coming out of Miami right now? I was like, you got to check out these guys called Pretty Ricky. Like, oh, Pretty Ricky, all right, cool. Let me check them out. Seen us, made us perform in the hotels. Like, yo, perform. Man, we on the dot. We picked up <laughs> knives and spoons and went crazy. He tried to sign us on the spot. My dad was like, no, no, no. Let's figure out what this looks like, what the paperwork right. is. But long story, Pretty January, bad. we got signed. February, we was in the studio and dropped the album. March, we was on tour. Wow. And at that point, every single week, we sold 30,000 albums all the way to platinum. Wow. Uh, on the hotline, I mean, Grind On Me went platinum. Your Body went platinum. It was our second single. The album went platinum. We came out with the second album. They couldn't really figure out if we was hip hop or R&B, so they put us on both charts. So when the album came out for our second album, we was number one on both charts for five consecutive weeks on the Billboard charts. So all those songs hit top, top five. A lot of them hit number one wow, wow. on the Hot 100 charts, the top, one, uh, top 40 charts. And, you know, and then we, we kind of flatlined, you know, we flatlined at our, at, our, at our peak of our career because we end up splitting with the lead singer because of money issues. Okay. My dad handled the money and uh, he didn't do the right things. Right. He made bad business decision and just left us flat broke. Mm. My whole music career. I got zero dollars from my whole music career. Wow. Platinum albums, everything. And my dad was a guy who had the brand new bands a year before it came out. You know, he had the two-story house in Kara City, moved to the suburbs. He had his own store, everything like, so we felt like the money was best in his hands. Got into an argument, not even an argument, because I didn't even do nothing. I mean, 28 years old, I stayed all the way till I was 28. And my father got mad one day, kicked me out the house. He, he had all the money, like, we, that's, that was when we found out we was broke. Wow, wow. And kicked me out the house, I had zero dollars to my name. Literally zero, zero dollars, no clothes, no nothing. I was with my girl at the time and she was like, hey, let's just go to my mom's house, see if it's cool. My mom said, all right, cool. I went in her little room she grew up in and from being in that room, I was like, yo, I'm not going out like this. I got a call from a guy named Maddie J saying, hey, you can make money off of tweeting. I was like, shit, that sounds easy to me. So I started figuring out ways that I can build a massive following because me as Spectacular, there's no way for me to scale a hundred spectacular pages, right? So I had to figure out a way to do that. 
So the way that I figured out how to horizontally scale was taking advantage of other people's presence online. So Cat Williams, Will Ferrell, Angelina Jolie, Brad Pitt, Jay-Z, Jim Carrey, whoever was hot at the time, and I started building the audience. I built the cat called Grumpy Cat, and we just started building wow. it up. Fat, so, so huge. And my life is 80-20 on everything. So 80% was the parody accounts. I did the Grumpy Cat as a test. Seen a cat on YouTube, I was like, ah, that, that looks like it'd be great. Created an account. Years later, $100 million net worth. Really? Merchandise in all stores from draws, underwears, anything you name the cat created. And then from that point, I was like, you know what? You know, six months in, I'm staying in my mom, I mean, my girlfriend, mom house. By the time I got to six months, I was $100,000. So I was like, you know what? I'm doing this for myself. I can help more people. Right. I was like, you know what? I can help celebrities who put in all this work, who put in all this hard work, dedication on building their brand up from the records, but now they're, they're just doing bad. But I can revive that because it took me several years to build six million followers on Twitter. That's because that's what I was on at the time. Wow, wow. Transition to Facebook. And I was like, yo, these guys already have five million, 10 million. So I started cutting deals with them. Like, listen, I'm going to help you monetize it because right now you didn't have a hit since 2004. And I know how to monetize something you don't know how to do. Every successful business is solving a great problem. The industry, they was broke. They didn't really understand how to monetize something. They were sitting on the gold mine, right? And then I was like, let's go. But they took me for granted. It was like, oh, you pretty Ricky. What you know? Start going with the white guys with the button ups and the suits on. Nobody paid me no attention. They wouldn't give me a chance. Really? So I was like, all right, you know what? I started showing them my accounts. All right, I was making $60,000 off of one of my pages. Then I got another guy who believed in me. He gave me a chance. I made him $20,000 a month. He didn't have a hit since 2005, you know, and now he's starting to see this residual. Call him, I call him first green. Hello? <laughs> like, he's you know, on, he's it's on money. It. It's money coming in. Spec coming from what money? Then since that still wasn't a factor to people, I, I started coming with money. I was like, hey, I got $100,000. Guys are still telling me it ain't good enough. Really? They went with the guys from the suit and the ties. Got robbed. Came right back. All right, cool. Now you want to work with me. All right, cool. Then I was like, all right, what is a blue ocean strategy? Because this is what everybody else is doing. I took the blue ocean strategy. I was like, you know what? In the music industry, they get upfront advances and they get paid on a residual. And then I was like, all right, cool. I brought that to the industry the same way that the banks put the drive throughs They took it from restaurants. Yep, yep, yep. I did the same thing. This is what the music industry is doing. Let me bring that over here. The competitors didn't even know what the hell hit them. I came money up front, boom, give you 100,000, give you 150,000, and I give you a minimum. I'm gonna make you a guarantee $20,000 a month, guaranteed. I'm gonna put that on paper. And then my business started skyrocketing. Incredible. It, it hit up to 100 celebrities. Before you know it, I was on the Inc. 5000 list of the fastest growing companies in America, 1,600% growth in the last three years. Uh, we made, you know, um, we made 262 on the list. Uh, out of 18 million companies, transition from that to getting the Entrepreneur 360 Award for the best property held companies in America. This is my second year winning it with my team. But throughout that time, like it was a rocky start. You're an entrepreneur, like you're super successful. Absolutely. Shit hit rock bottom for me. So as I'm like scaling crazy, I'm like killing yep, it, making yep. all this money. Facebook changed one thing, dropped my revenue by 80% in one month. But I was preparing. I was preparing, I realized that that doomsday was coming at some point. So I started preparing. My, my, my competitors took it for granted. They didn't take it So serious. beforehand, you were preparing knowing that it could be a change. I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. I just didn't know when. So I started positioning my company in a way that we can, tr we can pivot. So when that time come, I pivoted. Because wow. I was already ready. I was ready. It's just when it was coming. So when it came, I hit my revenue dropped, but as it dropped, it was coming back up really slowly but surely because the pivot I made. But throughout that time, think about it. I had 25 employees at the time around that amount, and I had their families that was depending on That's me. That's right. Right? And it's a, a lot of accountability. Fact. It's a lot of accountability. So not only it was my family I had to take care of, but it was their family. So I was like, I was like, shit, I can't, I can't go like, I can't go out yeah. like this. So I started reading all the books until like five years ago. 
three, uh, four years ago, I never even read books before. Really? I used to say, I'm not reading. What if, who got time for that? Like an idiot, so ignorant. Yeah, ignoring of, the power of information. Because of my environment I was yeah, around. Yeah. So okay. once I ch switched out, my mindset switched. So as I was falling down and I was coming back up, building the plane while I was falling, and I realized that, man, I need to get on it. So I started reading books. I read over 100 books. I started paying mentors. I started paying coaches. Uh, I started re really being uh, uh, reactive and, and understanding that the more value I add to a person, yep. the more I can even get, right? It's like right. the more people you can make rich, the more you can, right. you know, it, it's reciprocated. Right. So once I realized that, I started switching my mindset and not being all about me and being all about that person. And if it comes, it comes. The universe always figure out how to land that back on your lap. Right. So once I realized that and being, being raised by a street guy, they teach you the gain is be sold, not told. You know, don't introduce them to the plug. That's what I got taught. Wow. So coming into the industry, it was one of the hardest things for me to do to understand, listen, my contacts is your contact. You need um, access to a billionaire that, that's looking for something to invest in and you have something that's lucrative that could be financially financially beneficial to this person. It's my obligation yep. to connect y'all. Relationships. Relationship-based, right? They say your network is your that's network, right? right? And I, un I didn't understand that. So as I'm building this plane, you know, trying to pull it back up, I'm creating relationships. You know, I'm helping as many people as possible. I'm reading books. I'm taking programs, I'm taking courses, you know, I'm, I'm actively looking for mentorship on the different things that I need strengths in. I'm hiring people for my weaknesses. Incredible. And I'm just, I'm just doing all these different things so I can bring my plane back up. And all of a sudden I was like, man, as I'm bringing it back up and I made my pivot, I was like, you know what? It's not about these celebrities. Even if, even though they do need help, yep, yep. it's not about them. It's about the everyday right. person That's who right. has a great brand, That's who right. has a great, great story that don't have the resources to scale up their yep. brand on social media, don't have the right team, don't have the financial That's ability. That's scale. Right? Now but you're dealing with scale. Exactly. So now I'm realizing like, okay, this is a scalable mindset. All right. Let me figure out how to help the everyday person to scale out their, 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 their situation. And I started crushing and getting companies like Zappos and you know wow. Clark Shoe Brand paying me six figure budgets every campaign. Like and it started building and building and building. And then it hit me again. I was like, you know what? This ain't even it. Instead of them paying me, because the price I charge everybody can afford, let me start a school. Let me start a, a online school where people can learn at their own pace. That may not have that budget, exactly. but have a, a hunger. Exactly, so I don't believe in giving anything for free when it comes to information, certain information, yep. because they take it for granted, people yep. that pay, pay attention. Agreed. Russell, Russell Brunson says that, and I agree. So I put it at an affordable price point so they can get in, they can learn everything. Because when I think back in school, I don't know about you, and I kind of heard a little about your story, but school sucked. Yep. It's bullshit they're yep. teaching you in yep. school, yep. right? They don't teach you anything that can benefit you in the real world. Yeah. The school systems was brought in place to have a way for the people who's working at the factories for their kids to That's go right. and stay busy. So they only taught them a bunch of BS so they can get yep. ready to get old enough to start working in the factories again. That's right. The school systems never change. Yep. That's one of the only places, uh, industries that never got disrupted. Everything else, car industry is getting disrupted. You got self-driving cars. You got, you know, every everything is getting disrupted. But Interesting. the school system. very systems, good way to put that. Nobody's disrupting, so disrupting the school system. So I was like, all right, what can I do, and play my part? Because a lot of times people talk. You know, people yep, talk blah, all blah, the blah. time. Everybody showing up late. They they all talk, no action. Like the over promise, under deliver. That shit is whack. Yeah. So it's like, all right, cool. What can I do, to not only provide for my community because. African Americans have little to no resources. They, we were slaves for three, 300 years, and when we got released, they didn't give us shit. It was like, all right, you're good, going on about your business, right? And we really the only, the only coaches that was a slave. So when we got released as slaves and handcuffs got taken off us and they brung us over here, it's like, all right, y'all free. What the fuck are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? Like, we don't have no resources, no funding, no nothing. It's just like, and that's why, my culture is like this all the time. If I come up, it's like, hey, I made it, shit. You figure out how to do it yourself. Mm. So I thought it's like, we, somebody has to switch it. 
You know, Love the that. guys that's on the top, they, it's only so much they can do. It's Love only that. so much they can do. So how can I play my part? Who's the next Jay-Z? Who's the next Diddy? Who's the next Master P? Who's the next those guys? I don't see nobody stepping up. So I say, you know what? I'm going to step up. I'm going to put, I'm going to put, I'm going to put everything I learned on the line. I'm going to put my relationships out. Right. So put your heart out there. They can get access to what I have access to. So in my program, I have millionaire teachers. If you hit seven figures, eight figures, nine figures in your business, I'm trying to get my, my mentor to, to, do, to join the uh, teaching the program. Jeff Hoffman, he sold Priceline for like $60 billion. Wow. I want to get him involved in that. Um, and then Diddy, try to get him involved in that. And all these teachers, they're teaching on their skill set. So if you crushed it in sales and you made millions off of sales, I got you to teach sales. You made millions off a of line of credit. You got $23 million line of credit. Teach my people right. how to do that for themselves. Sharing the resources, sharing the exactly. information, that platform. So the same thing with wow, me. I, I like learned that. how to do social media. I built up Grumpy Cat to $100 million network. I built up Cat's 79, 79 million followers for my clients in the last two years that I've been- Really? Like, from the last two years. I did a trillion impressions. I did over uh, billions of video views. Like, I'm gonna teach you that skill set in my program. That's what I can bring. And anything that I'm not a 10 on and I'm just a nine or an eight, I want somebody that's teaching us a 10 on that. How to match, what's the difference between a, a balance statement, a, prof, a P&L sheet, what's a cash flow statement, what's a balance sheet? Yeah. What, what is this? The average person don't understand that. You know, they don't understand that. So I want to create a curriculum that's only eight weeks that they could come in and it accelerate the process. Wow, that's powerful, man. Right? right. And then I went to Harvard and I was like, all right, I learned the street stuff. I learned the book stuff. I have experience in business. I have multiple multi-million dollar businesses. All right. What, do, what don't I know? What, what don't I? So I was like, ah, let me go to Harvard. Let me see what they're doing. Went to Harvard. I was like, all right, cool. Let me see what y'all got going on and take that information to bring back to my community, wow. people who can't go to Harvard, all right? Whatever I can extract out of that, however they teach through case studies, bring that back. Now I'm teaching through case that's studies. That's powerful, man. Right, so that's pretty much wow, it. Wow, Spec, you just blew my mind. It's amazing and even more so, I always talk about a lot of us get stuck and I love, stuck means you've plateaued and you plateaued in, in your former career, and I guess I'm feeling that you will never ever fall victim of plateauing because I always say life is a true value add. It's unlimited, it has no ceiling, mm -hmm. and no wonder you're on high alert to make sure you never plateau. More so, you're taking life in your own hands versus you know being passive in life, and I tell this to my son, never be passive. Mm -hmm. It's your life. You are who you are. There's only one of you on the planet be proud of it. Know you're special. Know you have amazing strengths. Yes, we all have weaknesses. Be aware of them. Don't try to fix them because they'll take a lifetime. Just leverage and scale with others that can yes. help you and you know benefit from your weaknesses. You can help them with their weaknesses. And be, if it wasn't for those that experience you went through, you wouldn't be. That's why I'm, mistakes are good. I call them speed bumps. And and folks like you and I, we're trying to limit big mistakes that others may be exposed to. And, and it's important to take, you know, big mistake. You know, you were young, you didn't realize. I, I was young, I did some, some really stupid things, but if I didn't do those things, I would never learn. That doesn't mean the other Bobby or the other spec has to do the same thing. Yes. If they're willing to be humble, surrender, there's no motives, it's only good intentions because going to Harvard, having all this basic information, it sounds intimidating, but when you really expose yourself and you open up your heart, yeah. it's two plus two equals four. It's so yeah. easy uh, to really understand. So I, I man, I, I, I'm, I'm shocked, mm -hmm. shocked at your story, shocked. So now you're, you're an entrepreneur. It's, it's not just the entertainment. You're, you're pretty much global scale. You're helping all business owners. You're helping yes. all different brands. Um, is there any industries you don't help? It's really just a high, income skill you know and once you uh, once you inherit that you can apply it to, to any anything. industry it doesn't matter do you need to know what's a cash flow statement what's ca what's a balance sheet yeah you yeah, a business, yeah, yeah. Man, you yeah, need yeah, to know yeah. that right do you need to know how to get lines of credit for your business and 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 be able to take off anything and learn hacks that these everyday rich people are using yep, yep. you deserve to have access right. to that Right. And so do you need to brand yourself? 
No matter if you're building a company, you're building a personal brand, you need to brand yourself. Look at Jeff Bezos. He campaigning in India. He's like, do he need, he's the number one richest man in the world. Yeah, yeah. But that just shows you how important yeah. personal branding is. You buy regular coffee, you buy Starbucks coffee. That shit is 50 cents. Starbucks coffee, $4 for the same coffee. It just got a logo That's on right. it. So once you understand these skill sets and you build that up, then sky's the limit. So I feel like everybody need it. And even if you're not planning on using it, then you should still learn it okay. just to know it, right? So when you ever need it, like I said, if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. That's right. So when you need it, you got it. Yeah. You got it going, yeah. You know, let me ask you a question. And, and um, I'm meeting so many awesome people here in Southern California, and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of stuck on this topic because I feel really bad for the, the individuals that are on social media, not benefiting from social media, just diving in useless content or useless images there's nothing that you can get from i always say that not to pick on people that own ferraris or lamborghinis but there's no information it's beautiful for a moment in time to hey nice car mm -hmm. but that's all it is you're not gonna get no information so you're magical what you do for business owners and folks that own a brand and they want to scale they want to be productive they want to become financially free mm -hmm. you definitely have that information to help them what would you recommend for the, the, the other side of that popsicle stick, the consumer not benefiting or getting anything from social media other than truly being stuck? Mm. I don't know if, I, if you understand what I'm no, saying. I, exactly you know, I see a lot saying. of people, they're just, there's, social media, it's the first time, like I mentioned, the five months I've been exposed to this, it's powerful. It connected you and I, but I'm seeing so many people, now that I'm at dinner with me and my wife, before I was always on my emails at work, and everyone was on their phone too at the dining in the restaurant. And I'm saying, well, they're on their emails too. We're all rocking and we're all jamming. Now, when I get up to the restroom, it's not because I have to go to the bathroom. I'm so curious what they're looking at. You mm. know, because right now I don't have a job. I saw I'm, I'm kind of unemployed. So I got some time to surf around. And I look at their phones as I'm going to the restroom. Nine out of 10 are Instagram. And they're just scrolling through. They're not even, they don't even stop for a moment to read anything. They're scrolling. So I, I think they're stuck. What do you recommend for those people that are falling victim to this addiction and not being productive or getting anything out of it? Well, they have to purge. They have to purge their followers. If anybody is not adding value to you, you got you to gotta unfollow them or restrict their account. When you restrict their account on social media, you won't even see their content. Right? You can put them on mute and now you don't have to see their content so they can't feel some type of way that you unfollowed them. Okay. But at least you have consciously, when you're scrolling, it's things that's going to motivate you, teach you, because your, your input is your output. Okay, right? yeah, so yeah. You're you, the product of what you're consuming. Exactly, exactly. So as you're looking at this, you become that. You become one with that, right? So as you're taking on this information, your psychology, is, um, uh, your conscious mind is automatically where it needs to be. Yep, yep. But if you're watching fight videos and gossip, and your mind is going to be on that. So if you can figure out a way to follow the pages, the people that motivate you, put the people on punishment and restrict them that's negative or that's, that's not really what you want it to be mentally, then you can get what you need to be. So you always so so, so manage on. this device, yeah. control this device because you know I ran into an awesome individual at a boot camp I did here and he had incredible, incredible questions and I asked him, I was impressed with his results and he was kind of, he, he hit that plateau. So I went right into the social media. He goes, well, Bobby's seen you on social media here and there, and he's in the drapery business, the mm -hmm. linens and all that. I got a boy in there and, too. And he's just, and so I asked him, I had to ask him, you know, like who are some of the folks you're following? And a lot of things he's doing has no relevance of following some incredible people that are maybe in a whole different industry yeah. spec has no relevance of where he wants to go. So maybe what you could do, what you just said, because you are the expert in it, is to maybe suspend some of the followers just for a moment in time. Yeah. You know, if you're looking at some awesome days. individuals popping bottles, partying in, in Ibiza, and you want to be that Bobby Castro, that spec one day, you can't get distracted, and that is a distraction. So I love what you say, they yeah. can suspend the account, they can manage the account yes. and, and follow the people in your industry and, and, and have information where you want to go from A to B. Don't worry about going to Z. Yeah. Go to A to B. Micro when steps. you maximize, then go B to C. But don't even think about C until you get to B and you maximize. You take a look back that I get everything. So, man, I, I, the social media, I'm so fascinated. 
but uh, I'm so scared for so many because, man, it is, it is powerful. Yeah. It, it, I mean, I'm even getting on this stuff now. I'm, I'm starting to just, uh, this thing, and, and, and I'm aware of it. So if I'm mm-hmm. falling victim of that, and I am an extreme focused person, mm-hmm. and, it, it, you know, I'm seeing people at 1 o'clock in the, the afternoon on the East Coast or 2 o'clock sending me a beautiful message. Bobby, man, I love your energy, what you're doing for people. You're so beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful vibes are giving me. But then I'm saying, man, I, I hope you're, you're just on a break right now because if you're at work and you're fighting for your family and you're mm. sending me these beautiful vibes, you're losing. Mm. And, and that's transparency. No one, I notice on social media, oh, don't say that, Bobby. We want those vibes. Mm-hmm. I'm from my heart, man. I'm doing this. I expect nothing in return. But get something out of this device, man. Create a net worth out of this. Yes. You know? Yeah, yeah I think, honestly, people got to be intentional on what why they're using social media and if you can be intentional then you're able to make the right decisions and 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 like if you see my phone right now i don't even know if um where is my phone at right now so you can actually see right if i go to my social media right now Mm -hmm. if i'm one too long it'll pop up and say hey spec You've been on here for too long. A lot of gurus in social media, they're like you. Yeah. They're e- See, this dude is controlling his pulse, right. making sure he doesn't get distracted. But guess what? I've met uh, several people so far in California that are on the level as you are. They all told me the same thing. Yeah. They, they control it. Um, yeah. I met this young individual just the other day, Casey Adams. Mm-hmm. He, he says, Bobby, it doesn't yeah. control me. I control it. And he showed me. He, was, he goes, look at I, I it, yeah. it cuts me off. It tells me, that's hey, it. that's it. Enough smoking that crack. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love Casey. Casey is dope. Oh, beautiful young man, mm-hmm. and um, it's awesome. Good energy. But an incredible story you have. So, you know, because I have a big family. My, my dad, he passed when he was 94. My dad, um, he was Puerto Rican. My mother's Jewish and Irish. We were born in the Bronx, raised all our life in South Florida. And I come from a big family. My dad had 14, 15 kids. My dad you had know? 12. So we have a lot of, yeah, a lot of, a lot of passion, I call it. Mm-hmm. Um, are you and your dad square now? He, so we went through a moment. Okay. And it was actually even on TV. Um, but yeah, a crowd on TV, man. It was just like really? my dad was always hardcore. Everything was, it was like, everything is like a gangster, right? So it was like one of those street dudes and everything was tough love, making money. And, you know, it was never no, it was no soft spot with him. Everything was drill sergeant. And it got to the point was where he was, like I say, he handled all the money. And I feel like he know that he messed up and everything with him is just about money. And he's where he's at in life. And he was always a hustler. So it's not you no know, 401k he thought about. Like he didn't like he didn't educate himself. Sure. You know, to prepare himself for, le- for later. The best leaders see down the block and and. and stop you from going through those yeah you know those situations right but he didn't do that as the leader he just led us to you know dead end and then that was just it so even with himself he did the same thing Mm -hmm. with himself so all that money but no 401k no 401b whatever like no ara plan like no like college like nothing right it was just all money spend money spend money spend and i don't know what he invested in i don't know i really don't know you know i i can relate a little bit to your dad and not to give him um any love but I was too, you, we all humans, we become a control freak of our own lives, especially yeah. when you're accountable for other lives and you don't know sometimes, it's not thrown in the white flag spec, it's like what you said earlier, leveraging people that may have more information that you have that yeah. you can learn from. Yes. And maybe him looking back now, he says, man, I, I, I should have leveraged to uh, some information I wasn't aware of and then yeah. surrender, yes. um, be humble, it, it's okay um, because, th- how I made my fortune, forget about the economics and the financial situation. Generally in life, how I feel is because I've leveraged other people that were not smarter than me. They just were good at something I wasn't. Yeah. And it's cool. And, it's, and, and so you much. benefit from it. You so grow. Much. And, um, you know, but I'm sure he's a, a, an amazing individual. And, yeah. and, and, yeah. and, you know. This was the issue. The issue with him was 
when you come from the streets, it's like you only could trust certain, like it's a code on how you trust people. Or like he would have never did what this, like how this happened, right? He would have never did that. It's against his code. But this is what it's about. That's right, yeah. So we missed that. He missed that whole part of the evolution. Right, yeah. you can't still be using pay phones when everybody uses yes. cell phones. You have to upgrade. That's right. You got to move with life. Apple, Apple forces you to upgrade your phone. They bug the hell out of you. You need to upgrade. You need to upgrade. And I'm like tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Right? Upgrade. upgrade. That's right. And that's that was him. So, at the times that you needed to utilize other people and, and become humble and indulge in the things that is gonna help you mentally. Like he got with the suit and tie guys and he couldn't really, he couldn't Drive. really spar with them because his knowledge only went so far, but he didn't, he didn't take on the responsibility on learning the things or educating himself a way where he can compete now. Cause yeah. that only took him here. Got but it, once yeah. you wants to get once you yeah. want to get here, yep. it's a whole nother of dedication. Different stage. You gotta you gotta be able to yep. evolve, evolve, right? And sometimes you might just have to pass that baton yeah. and say, "Hey, now you take it across the finish line." Yep. But if you can't you can't drive and, and it's at night, then you gotta give somebody. I love that, that man. It's so true. You know, life. You know, the, uh, Kodak camera for the ones that don't know who Kodak camera is. They're the ones that have that little Polaroid. They still have a little fun little thing for the kids to shoot. They ignore digital spec. Yes. Uh, there's, a, there's a company that everyone knows, Walmart. Yes. They ignore the power of the internet yeah. and they let yep. a, a cool dude that had a total different business strategy versus the business he created in 1995 with 10 employees. Today it's worth under a trillion dollars. It's called Amazon. Walmart ignored it. As we all do in our life, we ignore it. We want to be the old. You know, yesterday was yesterday, today's today, forget about tomorrow. Walmart allowed this Amazon 1995 baby come right in and become the Mac Daddy of everything. I got one for you too. Blockbuster. Bingo. Blockbuster yeah. seen Netflix, had a conversation with them. Missed it. Had a conversation with them, took it for granted, like, oh, that digital stuff. People want to come to Blockbuster because they want the popcorn. And they want to, that's what they thought. They want the Selling popcorn. Selling themselves on and, the old. Exactly. And it was like, no, they want convenience. Yeah. They don't free. want popcorn. And <laughs> they took it for granted with Netflix. And then Redbox came. Incredible. The same thing. So now, look what's going on now. You have Blockbuster. They learned. They could have bought out Netflix have the digital blockbuster i would still want to watch if they came out with a digital i would still want to watch that over because that brand is so sure, strong sure. they should have bought out red yeah, box yeah. and now they should have been blockbuster in every walmart every yep. grocery store they should see and it's back to the 80 20 rule let me just test out because maybe i love it maybe this digital thing might work so 80 percent of this is what's working and take that 20 percent. let me go purchase because at that time they was crushing it yeah. there was a conglomerate it's huge so just to buy a netflix whatever y'all want come on let me get just in it. case you a threat let me put y'all on my team red box oh i see what y'all doing over there That's That's, right. let, let me buy That's you right. out let me put blockbuster on every corner let me pay now. attention to it let me pay attention let me pay attention and they would have never went anywhere you know spec uh, a lot of people will what does that have to do with me personally? And I'm telling you, this is where I hit the home run in life. There's only one of you, there's only one of me. Mm -hmm. it's, it's priceless. Mm -hmm. Imagine the ones that are stuck, the ones that are complaining, the, one have, the ones that have excuses. You could be a secretary, you could be a janitor. Oh. I'm all about the masses. I'm not here on social media to help anybody that is already doing extremely well in life. I'm here to really wake up people, to let them know that you will stay stuck. You will be that blockbuster. You will be everything we're just talking about unless you're willing to change. And the only way you're going to be changing is not getting distracted, meaning that you've got to limit some of your friends, some of your associations. Yes. Not to say they're bad. They're beautiful people. But you only have so many minutes in a day. Mm -hmm. It is a full-time job to have a lot of friends, a lot of associates that really aren't bringing you value yes. to where you want to go. They're bringing you value, they're giving you hugs, they're telling you about all their problems, they're complaining, yeah. they're stuck like you, you know the same information they know, 
there's no value there. Yeah. So you are bigger than Amazon. That's my point. Forget about Amazon, forget about Walmart. You're bigger than all those corporations, but yet you are stuck and complain about your job, you're not getting promoted, you're not making enough, and everything's getting expensive. But get this, everything's moving forward and you're staying stuck. Yep. And I got it, I got it years ago without knowing I got it because I had the same thing happen to me. I plateaued, I put my life in other people's hands. Mm. You got it, you're responsible for yourself. You're accountable for all your actions, all your decisions, and all your outcomes. And you made a decision, I will never be put in this position again. Yeah, I was young. If I had to do it again at the same age, I probably would because I didn't have the information. Mm -hmm. And you did something about it. Yeah. You have the same experience that Speck went through, that I went through. The only difference is he and I learned from it and did something with it with a consistency effort. Yeah. You know, I, I get so jacked up, man. I get so jacked. It's so easy. It's so easy, but only when you get unstuck. Yeah. Pe people with natural behaviors is to point the finger. You know, it's his fault. Yeah. It's her fault. But nobody takes ownership. Nobody takes ownership and say, you know what? It's my fault. It's my fault for letting this person stay in my life this long. It's my fault for not doing my homework. It's my fault for not doing due diligence on this person that scammed me. Right? So people don't ever take ownership. And I think that's what they're falling short on. Yeah. Because once you can take ownership, you can react accordingly. But if you not even taking ownership, you're always going to be there with the victim mentality. And then if you have somebody supporting problem. your excuses, oh, come on. supporting your complaints, <laughs> right. misery loves company, yeah. you're going to, you'll never, you'll never the see group. the light. Yeah. That's so, that's why it's so important to be intentional even about the friends that you pick, right? Because if not, then you see yourself going down this rabbit hole with a bunch of losers. You know, they holding yeah. hands, kumbaya, and just talking about everybody gossiping. I hate gossiping. Yeah. It just makes Wasted. Me, it's it wasted just, effort. Oh, my God. You get I nothing from it. it. I, I don't even have a TV in my house. Yeah. And I'm like, I have a TV, but it's in the spot that it's in because it looks retarded with no TV there. <laughs> but in front of my TV, literally, it's a huge-ass whiteboard <laughs> where my company come over for my leadership meeting, and we use wow. the whiteboard, so I can't even see the TV. It's literally a huge, huge as the size of my wall whiteboard in front of my TV. I don't even go because I, I don't like I don't like gossip. I don't like negativity. Like I said, your, your input is your output. That's right, man. So if I can if I can be a person who put things around me, that's going to automatically put me on the right track. It's going to help me out. Like I was talking to my brother the other day and he was talking about how people just be hating on them and. You know, they don't want to see you do good. And, and like they're, they're thinking about how can they get over on them or they want them to pay for everything. And I'm just like, you just around the wrong people, bro. Yeah. Don't pay attention to that. Yeah. You just around. Figure out how could you find people who are on the same mission. as yeah. you. Yeah. Same frequency, huh? Same frequency. And it's and you think it's so hard. And I had to send him some messages it's like, yo, this is what I do. Like if I see somebody, I figure out a way I can help them. Or, or see how I can get involved with something they got going on. See, I can add value. And then if it's, if it's reciprocal and you, you love my energy, I love your energy, then we connect on yeah. another level and we continuously build on that. But if you're not even trying, you're too busy saying, oh, all my friends are trash. Like, oh, everybody's negative and nobody motivates me and they talk down on me and tell me what I can't do instead of what I can do. Yeah. Then you have to do something That's about right. That. Ownership again. Go out and seek those friends. That's See right. how you can add value to them. See how you can help them in that situation. And don't worry about you. Don't go in there I with love a, that. Don't go in there with the intention that you're going to get something. Go in there with the intention that I like this person. I want to help them. And if we can build a relationship based on me helping, then let's build. I love that. You know, I, I spec. I probably uh, I would say the top five questions I normally get, and I DM everyone back. I just can't help but give someone a hug. High five. I love giving value. I, I over deliver value. I only focus on value, value, value. And life, mm -hmm. somehow, some way, these invoices come to you. Oh, the universe. People skills. The universe. So they say, Bobby, okay, I'll cut everyone out of my life. Number one, you don't have to cut everyone out of your life. You cut the ones out of your life or take a time out for a moment in time, the ones that are not giving you value yes. for you to get to your benchmark to, to where you want to go. So how do I do it, Bobby? Mm. People skills. Yes. You got to tell me more than that, Bobby. What do you mean people skills? Open your heart. Be kind to others. Yep. Kindness is powerful. Don't be the jerk. 
Don't be rough and tough. I am telling you, I have created my personal net worth being kind, transparent. I used to work harder being the total opposite. I got nowhere. And when you're kind, people sense it. People want to do business with you. People want to associate yourself with it. They open your heart. You're open your heart. And that's where the value exchange comes to. Now, that may sound like a bunch of BS to a lot of people. Yeah. I am just telling you what Simple. personally worked for me. It, prime example, you and I were kind to one another, mm -hmm. communicating on the internet. Your people skills are right on time. I, I don't waste my time with people who are not kind because mm -hmm. you get nothing no, you know, value from somebody who has right. bad intentions. Yeah. And that's where we're sitting here today. The yeah. power of people skills. Yeah, and you know it's crazy because so many people go in there with bad intentions. Oh, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, but that shit don't last. Yeah. Right? Re and and you know it's crazy. This is this is the funny thing. As soon as I sat down, it's like, oh, you know, this person was talking about you, this person, this person. So imagine I was just a nasty person or I try to, you know, mess people over or try to get over on them. This said, world is small. They said right? beautiful things about you. Thank you. I'm glad. But if they didn't, imagine, imagine what this would have yeah, never even happened. Of course. You would have been like, respect. Yeah. Yeah. You thought you was getting over on yeah. me, right? That's and, right. And, and that word, and it spreads. Yeah. And that's one thing my father did teach me. Your name is everything. That's how you your build word, relationships, your right? Is, your word is everything. Integrity is everything. You, if I, at one point, at any one moment, I decided that money is worth my more than my integrity, then I lose. Yeah, yeah. Because you'll find somebody down the line that you didn't have integrity with and you mess them over and then you realize that, oh, wow, that guy is what? He's the new CEO of Amazon? Oh, wow. Yeah. And this is the guy yeah. you thought was nobody. He was the little janitor dude. You're like, ah, get out of here, little peasant. And you treat yeah. everybody like, because you yeah. got a nice car, you got yep, a nice yep. house, you got a couple... You know, commas in your bank account, or, or you the man yeah. now. But I the same it. way yeah. that shit go like this. Absolutely, go right down. And 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 honestly, I'm at where I'm at in life. But who knows? I might get another wake up call. Well, boom, I hit it. I hit it again. But you're on high alert. But it don't matter. That's right. Who cares? That's right. I can literally make some calls like, yo, this is the situation. Like, you know, off of my compound kindness and my compound relationships that build. Yeah. It's like, oh, spec, you need this. All right, and I got a guy right now who needs you right on this. Before you know it. I'm back up. That's right. Because of my relationships. And that's and, how you leverage it. And that's how you leverage it. I love because it. Because if, if, you, if, if you're not adding value to people's lives and, and you're just too busy. You're not going to receive it, right? You know, I always say it. preparation. You're not gonna you could be broke like I was, like you were. Don't matter. But yeah. work on your people skills because that's preparing yourself. Because when that opportunity shows up, it will show up. Yes. The only reason opportunities are not showing up for you right now you just don't see it. Yep. When you start <laughs> applying to some of these techniques mm -hmm. and you start preparing yourself, preparation meets opportunity, magic happens. That's what happened to me and Sophie, man. We started bending saying we are doing something wrong. We are completely all over the place. We just started preparing ourselves for what? I don't know, it doesn't make a difference. Mm -hmm. um, and when opportunity shows up, it's always there. When you start seeing it, Man, magic happens, and that's what happened to um, Sophie and I. We, we, we more so, we're so blessed and so uh, grateful to be healthy. Yes, absolutely. We have our health. health my well. two children, our two children, have their health. Their two life partners have their health. My grandbabies, my mom. You know, a lot of families have their health. Uh, my, I have a sister that just recently passed uh, a week ago, and we move so quick, man. Even me, I'm so in tune of life and all that, and that I. I, I even missed that a little bit. So I'm looking back saying, mm, I wish I took some time to maybe give this person a hug yeah. because she was, she was amazing. So sometimes I miss it. And that's why I'm always working on myself. Yeah. And, and I'm, I learned from that. Have to be. You know? And I think that's the best thing to do is just work yeah. on yourself 24 seven. Anything I could do to become better, like I'm wanting. Like I fill up my dead time of thinking, just random thoughts and, and insert information. Even when I'm getting up in the morning, information. I'm laying down in bed before I go to sleep, information. Like, how can I work on myself? How, how can I become better? You know, what books can I read to, you know, develop a better skill yeah. set in this area? How can I make that stronger? Give me the and, advantage. How, yeah, how can I exactly, have, just keep exactly. growing? And, and that's all I do, man. All, all day, every day is like, who, who am I not helping that I could be helping? You know, and... And, and it's what, paying off. 
Yeah. You know? I, yeah, it's, it's definitely paying off. And, and, and a lot of times I always joke about this. I say I feel like it's like a, a group of people in the universe that's all there with pins and pads, like looking for like requests. It's like, <laughs> oh, you want this? Oh, he asked for it. Give it to him. Y'all know the rules. Go, go, give it to him. Like, so you got to be careful yeah. what you say to the universe because yes. it, it gives it back that's to right. you. Right. It's like the kindness pays off. It, it, it like comes back tenfold. So just because you didn't give me the value, that's right. it might come about that's right. 10 years later and be like, oh, you know, what? I talked to a guy named yeah. Bobby. Like, I would love to do business with you. These yeah, beautiful invoices great. show up Boom, all of a sudden. It came back around. It might not even come from you. It might come from this person, this person, this person that knew this person that all of a sudden is in contact with me now Incredible. that we're doing this amazing deal. Incredible. And that academy, is that already live? It's up and yeah, running? Yeah, I have over 942 students now. Wow, really? Yep, yep. That's, yeah. that, that's awesome. I would like to know more about that um, because it, 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 if your platform allows the others to leverage social media yes. to maybe one of their businesses Absolutely. or their life, somehow, yes. some way, if you're on social media, it's gonna be around, it's never going nowhere. Yeah these platforms where you're talking about your academy that's just a great way to understand social media how yes. can it benefit me yes. how can i touch other lives how can i scale in life yes. um interesting and what what's that what's the name of that academy yeah, it's called spectacular academy spectacular, spectacular academy. academy so if anybody want to go i do free training y'all can go help me go viral.com or y'all can just if you're lazy you want to do that you can text my personal number 786 six six one one two two four and uh takes a hashtag course and it'll send you a link to my free training wow you still have a miami number yeah damn seven right. eight six got to yeah he 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 grew up uh, right down the street where i grew up uh amazing what a small world and now he's in los angeles for the last six years six years and i mean he was literally on 57th avenue uh where i was i was uh on, on the rim of hialeah and opalaka and he was just in carroll city mm -hmm. just north of me Man, it's great pleasure, you know, great pleasure. Um, I'm even more excited that I met you because it's awesome because you meet people online the first time I'm exposed to myself. And um, even the, the folks that I have met like you, and then I say, yeah, I definitely want to physically meet them. I have yet to be dis disappointed because the power of relationships, unfortunately, I have some people that contact me on social media. Hey, Bobby, I got a real estate deal for you. Hey, I don't even know them. Hey, Bobby, I got this investment. That's not people skills. People skills is, <laughs> yeah. is what Spec and myself were doing. Spec, send me a warm vibe, Bobby. I just want to let you know I appreciate you. You have a lot of love for people, and I just wanted to send you a high five. That was it. I responded back. We responded back a few times thereafter. Nothing about business, nothing about what can you do for me, what can I do for you. It was just about a lot of support. And here we are meeting, and this is exactly how I created my $300 million personal net worth spec, yeah. was relationships and people skills. Yeah. I was that idiot in the past that didn't understand the power of that because I wanted it now. Mm. I didn't want to do the long-term efforts because with the build a relationship, it doesn't happen overnight. <laughs> yes. I mean, you, you got to dance a little bit. Yes, yes. A lot of people want now. Yeah. And, I, and I think that's what's the problem with millennials. Everything is Instagram, instant gratification. Every time, like, I want it now. Yeah. What? You say, oh, you're going to make money with me in six years? Oh, <laughs> hell no. Nah. Don't, don't pick his call up no more. Yeah. <laughs> six like, years? Are you six, kidding me? Oh, my God. I, I need, like, next week. I need uh, to, tonight. What are you doing tonight? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they want, man. So, I love that. Yeah, so, I mean, I, <laughs> it's all mindset, bro. It's all mindset. Definitely build relationships. That's what it's about building relationships, and, and when they come, and come, don't force it. A lot of times people try to force yeah. it, like you said. Yeah. Like, I did, you didn't even have a conversation with me already, you trying to do a deal yeah. with me. Like, it's like walking up to a girl, it's like, yo, I wanna get in them drawers tonight. It's yeah, like, what, exactly. you ain't getting nothing, no even date. if she wanna That's give right. it to you, right? And even, right. If, even if you really want to build a relationship and you just started off yeah. wrong, it's already about me, me, me. My rule of thumb is give 10 times before I ask one. I love that, you know, and it's so important when you, you know, I personally think, and I don't know, I'm, this is a great question for you. I am one that responds to DMs, LinkedIn, everyone, because I'm, I know the power of thanking you. I just know the power of kindness. Yeah. Can't explain it, but I, I get a huge return on it. Do you feel there's a lot of people, when you do get a response from a DM, 
and somebody maybe you respect or somebody that you would like to maybe meet mm -hmm. and just say high five, would they respond back to you? That is very powerful not to take that for granted, right? And, oh, or, no, you know, I, do, I do, don't. How do you manage that? Yeah. So in reference if, to If what? I'm a user, like I'm on Instagram and, and, I'm, and I send Spec a DM, oh, I, yeah. I send uh, Bobby a DM saying, mm -hmm. hey, um, really appreciate it or whatever. Mm -hmm. And just because you don't get a DM back or more so when you do get a DM, because a lot of people are surprised that I, I DM them and it's me. Yeah. And I'm, I was on the phone, check this out, cool dude. And, he, and I'm not the greatest type in spellers and I'm not good with technology. Yeah, me neither, me neither. And this, <laughs> this young man was warp speed on the DMs. And I said, listen, do you have a phone number? I'll call you right now. Wow. He gave me the phone number. I called him because I couldn't just keep up. I called him and he, he, he wants me to help him. He asked him some questions. And I said, well, for my, my biggest thing, you know, what are you doing right now? Shouldn't you be at work? Oh, no, uh, Bobby, I'm only 14 years old. I can't believe I'm speaking to you. Wow. And I said to myself, I didn't tell him, I said to myself, I can't believe it either. Wow. But then I told him, I said, more so, why aren't you in school? Wow. You know, so the power of a DM. It's powerful. It's powerful, but the reason someone responds to a DM is people skills of really saying something beautiful to somebody, mm -hmm. thanking them. And when you get a response, not to take that for granted, yeah, especially yeah. if you're talking to someone in business. Yeah, don't take that for granted. Like, Every relationship has to be treated like a baby. You know, you don't want to be too, too rough. You got to be delicate. You got to make sure like you're nurturing that process. Because one thing, especially if you don't know somebody, it can go left real yeah. fast. So you want to make sure you, you, you're doing it the right way and, and, and making sure you understanding and learning a person, right? And, you know, even from sitting down, like we know so much about each other just from you know, just sitting down Absolutely. on the camera, right? So after this is going to be even stronger because now That's we, right. we know more about each other. So it, it all started from just a message and now it's a delicate situation. We make sure, you know, I had some, some time. In integrity now really takes had, place. Exactly. That's what I'm getting at. You, you, just, you just put it on the nitro. Integrity. Making sure you got integrity about the situation and if you are trying to go in for a kill, like, save it that's right that's a bad intention yeah save just, it. just save it if it if it happens it's happening anything you wait for the happen, invitation if it was meant to happen it's gonna that's happen that's right if not if it doesn't happen it wasn't meant so just just let it play out i love that man the too too busy rushing the relationship right just like i said a relationship with a female you're not going straight in you gotta you gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do you gotta let it you gotta let it flow. develop man you gotta let it you flow. know let, let, uh, there's and i tell a lot of young people and i don't know what you feel and instagram is such a powerful force with the young millennials yeah. or but i i beg them pay attention to one platform called linkedin it oh, has some incredible lovely. resources yeah. If you're looking for a job, if you're looking for a better job, if you're looking for a second job, if you're looking to maybe get into business, pay attention to this platform that maybe you're not giving as much love, almost like what your illustration 80-20 is. Oh, yeah. Spend that 20% on LinkedIn. I love LinkedIn. And, and pay attention to it. It's a serious business entrepreneur platform. It's boring. You have to go all over the place. It's not hassle-free like, like Instagram, but that's a swimming pool you want to do some backstrokes in yeah honestly and the trick with linkedin is when you send somebody a request you put your message in that request and people will open and accept you 90 percent more conversion rate wow by you putting a message in there so it's like oh spec i seen your article on link uh, on on Inc. 5000, I love what you're doing, blah, blah, blah. And once I accept it, that message automatically go in my inbox. Then I'm going to respond. So it's even more wow. fruitful than Instagram when it comes to business because you have that one hack, that one cheat code. Another hack with you is, well, you say you're going back and forth, you can't keep yep. up. You just do a voice note. Do a voice note and you can say everything you got to say on that voice note. So you ain't got to keep going, typing back to back to back to back. So you don't have to do the phone number thing again. Just oh, give really? Me a quick Thank up. you, my brother. So what do I do? Just just talk? Say, I'll show hey, you. I'll show okay. you after this. Yeah, yeah. That'll be good for you. It'll be super easy, simple. 
And uh, that'll be great because yeah. because man, I I struggle on there. But LinkedIn, man, is something I, I'm begging people, young people. Yeah. I know Instagram's rocking and it's center stage. Mm -hmm. and, and if you want to be exposed to a lot of specs and bobbies and people that have really big hearts, man, when, when, when people are successful, yeah. don't be skeptical. Yeah. They want to help. They yeah. want to share. Sharing is caring. And I used to be the ones that were, why are they being so nice to me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, even to touch on that, I wouldn't take it for granted. Like just the fact that that 14 year old was on a call with you, like don't take it for granted because we're here saying what we're saying now, but it's some assholes. Yeah. It's some real yeah. douchebags. Yep. I think I'm all that. What yep. the fuck are you? Yep. Like, and, and, yep. and my life changed because it's sad to say, but I was pretty much something similar to that. I wasn't like hardcore douchebag, but I was really yeah. like on some small minded, just like, yeah. Like on some celebrity, like it wasn't even much really small minded. It was just more like it was levels, right? I felt like levels mm. type of like you know it's just why well, why am I having a full fledged conversation with you and and like you can help me like you can't help me. I know you can't help me. Like that's that used to wow. be my mindset. It's like you can't help me and and like you're just wasting my time. You're just trying to flirt with me and like wow. You know it's like because my DMs is different, probably way different than yours. Mine's like females. Like oh my god, spec. Oh yes, uh, I can't wait to have you. Yeah. Like my DMs <laughs> look like that, right? So so like I won't entertain a lot of that stuff. So once I kind of switch my mindset, is my mentor. I told you uh, Jeff Hoffman, and this was life changing to me. We were sitting down, I was speaking for the first time, and when I was speaking, it was in Hawaii, he was actually speaking. So when I was, I was like, oh my God, I got booked to speak at an event, it was for organization EO, and I looked, I was like, oh shit, my mentor speaking, wow. he was headlining. I was like, yo, my mentor get to see me for my first speech, and he's the keynote speaker. So when I go, he's like, prepping me and everything and I feel it all good. I got my support <laughs> sister with me. I'm feeling good. My son is there. My, my fiance wow. is there. Everybody's there. I'm feeling great. I'm like, wow, I'm nervous as hell. I was like, expect, <laughs> stop it, bro. You be on stage and 20,000 people performing. You got this. You use, you're, you're natural. But that's not the reason why I'm telling this story. We went out to lunch later on. It was a, a whole community, the lunch there. Mm -hmm. Everybody sitting at this table. Guys there, he's like, you know, on this little, feeling this self, everybody's talking about their businesses. I'm like, yeah, my company's doing this and this and this, right? He's talking bragging numbers and shit. And he turns to my mentor, he's like, yeah, what you do? Oh. <laughs> he blew his mind. <laughs> oh my God, he was like, yeah, I'm, I'm Jeff Hoffman. <laughs> I, I, I uh, founded Priceline. Yeah. <laughs> and a guy looked at me, you should have seen this. It freaking just just couldn't his believe face, it. His face just dropped. He's like, yeah, I sold up for 60 something billion dollars. So, so but you, overwhelmed. that was another lesson. You never know who you're talking That's to. That's right. So don't try I to agree get with that. your ass to kiss, right? And don't try to like do all this bragging and all so this. Much, so much work yeah, with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just never know who you're talking to. But the reason why I'm telling you the story, because we were sitting at this table, and it's all these guys, right, that he's worth a hundred times more or you could multiply all of our money together and multiply it times a hundred still There's still plenty have more than him more. this guy looks at me looks at my girl and say would you like something to drink wow so the whole tune like, changed i was like what do you are you hungry wow Wait, the whole dog what yeah. this man is worth every bit of billions and you're asking me to go get me some food. He say, no, sit down. Are you hungry? Are you thirsty? Because he felt like I, wow. I was, he was sitting and talking the whole time. He was and looking at my girl. He's like, you hungry? You, you good? I was like, no, I didn't even want him to get it. I was like, hell, there's no way Jeff Hoff is giving me wow. some food, fixing a plate for me and what bringing a... me back some water. Right? I was like, no, he still brought it back. Total tune you so, didn't expect, huh? So now that made me just... It's totally and just like I was like, who, how do I behave? Who the hell am I? Who the hell am I if a billionaire who co-founded Priceline and sold it for billions, who co-founded uh, uh, UBID and sold that for sixty-five billion, who created kiosks to print out your tickets at them airport and sold it for a hundred million dollars? Incredible. Who the hell am I? What, the, what have I accomplished that I can treat people? any way other than how he treated me. And that's how he got where he was at. That same type of good people skills, good intentions. Yes. 
No motives. I freaking love that guy. Yeah, man. wow. That's a powerful him. story. I love that guy. And ever since then, it switched me. That must have a game changer. Oh, my God. To total game different tune. Changer. Game changer. From that point forward, I was like, I would Good never. Good for you, man. I don't, a, I don't care if you're a bum. I don't care. Because basically, I'm a bum compared to Yeah, you to never want to disrespect you know? people. You don't so, want to be rude. Yeah, I love that, you man. You know, like, no matter how much money I got, like, the, the accomplishments that he, that he have and the fact that that was his mindset, it changed my whole life forever on how I deal with people. Yeah, now you're all about scale because that, that, that is scale thinking where you're just really global and not just um, all about me, me, I, I, I. What can I get? What can I get from that person? How can I take advantage of that person? Yeah. So much effort, so and much speak, energy that goes into of, that crap. Speaking of scale, you got a book called Scale too. Mike. No way. Yeah, yeah. Jeff Hoffman, wow. Search Scale by Jeff Hoffman. Yeah. <laughs> Man, you're quality people. I'm really, really, really happy that we finally met. Thank you. In California, man. That. Good people, man. Thank you, mother.